Amanda, congratulations for your documentary, Art for Everybody. Thank you so much. More of a congratulations is being showcased at South by Southwest. Um, how do you feel about that? Oh, I could not be more thrilled. Uh, you know, South by being a cultural festival, it's such a fun place to be. And also, um, you know, it's such a vibrant atmosphere with audiences that like, I really am looking forward to, well, first of all, being in a movie theater again. And second of all, being able to, you know, engage in, you know, really rich conversations about an artist who had a huge cultural impact. That is true. That is true. So tell us what sparked you to do this documentary, Art for Everybody. Yeah. So as a filmmaker, I'm always looking to find stories that talk about bigger cultural and human themes, but through the lens of a really compelling character story. Hmm. So um, I found that Thomas Kincaid had this in spades. I mean, he's this larger than life figure who lives basically a Greek tragedy of a life and the way that his um, life touches on these important cultural moments in American history um, really just m brings up all of these questions like you know what is art and who gets to decide um, the politicization of taste um, and then probably most importantly for me the idea of culture wars like you know obviously we're living in a very polarized moment right now. And I feel like you, when you see how Thomas Kincaid um, inserted himself into the culture wars of the late eighties and early nineties, um, I think you get some really interesting context for why that is still going on and how it started and whether it's, whether we should be having cultural wars. I mean, there's um, this, this uh, gentleman, James, um, Davison Hunter, who wrote the book Culture Wars and coined the term in like 1991, I think. He recently was um, talking about how culture wars don't necessarily lead to shooting wars, but shooting wars always result from culture wars because culture provides the justification for violence. And so I found that um, that was one of many reasons that Thomas Kincaid's story was actually incredibly rich and relevant to where we are today. So personally for you, um, you came across Thomas Kincaid. Was it uh, you own a painting or you just happen to walk into an art gallery yourself? I, <laughs> that's a great question. I think that, you know, when I was um, growing up, you know, there was there were Thomas Kincaid stores in the mall and, you know, you, he was everywhere. So um, he was definitely a part of the um, cultural and like visual fabric of life in the um, late 90s and early, well, the 90s generally and the early aughts. Um, so I think, you know, it was kind of hard to not know who he was. Um, I that And then, you know, because he had done such an effective job of creating this persona, you know, of the painter of light, then later in like 2006 and on when his uh, struggles started to become part of the public record that that was like very surprising so i think um you know he he was somebody that i definitely knew about but i didn't know the depth of complexity in his character and in his work until i started you know until i got in touch with the family basically researching this 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 film film and then it was like well there's this vault <laughs> and then I started to see some of the works that were in the vault and I was like this is amazing it was like a filmmaker's dream and then in addition to that there was like hundreds of thousands of hours of video recordings and audio cassette tapes um, which as you know from the film like he started recording his thoughts um just generally when he was 16 years old in 1974. So like I said, it was like, it was a gold mine. Well, before I get into that, uh, the treasure vault that uh, yeah. you speak of, <laughs> um, how did you convince your subjects uh, to participate in a documentary like this? Because it's, it's probably not an easy thing for them to talk about. Yeah, you are correct. I think the Kincaid family was incredibly brave and vulnerable, and I, I really feel honored by them putting their trust in me. Um, you know, when when we set out to make this, so my producing partner and I 
approached uh, Morgan Neville, the Academy Award winner filmmaker of, you know, Won't You Be My Neighbor, the Mr. Rogers documentary, Roadrunner, the Anthony Bourdain documentary, 20 Foot from Stardom. You know, Morgan and I have collaborated for like over a decade at this point, actually. And so um, <clears throat> we went to him to um, see if he would want to partner with us on this. And he was like, yes. So we went to the, the three of us went to the family and we were talking to them and we were like, listen, you know, we we're not interested in making a puff piece like nobody needs that he kind of made his own puff pieces when he was in his heyday um and we're not interested in making a hatchet job either and you can sort of look at our track record as filmmakers here like we're not interested in doing that we're trying to find a real portrait of this person um and morgan said something really interesting in that meeting that i keep just, I always think about, it. he said, you know, when you make a documentary together, it's like, we're all going into therapy together. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, that is so true. And that is what it was like. I mean, the family had had about 10 years at that point since Thomas's passing to kind of like be processing, you know, and I think they were ready to tell a more, um, I guess, honest or um, complete story about who he was and i do think it was a cathartic experience for for everyone which i frankly i was like honored to be able to provide so <laughs> wow and and i love morgan neville's films by the way he, yeah. he is a terrific uh, documentarian um mm -hmm. by yeah. himself so yeah. so let's talk about this vault because when you portrayed that vault I I just had no idea where is this vault first of all um you know I'm not actually sure if I'm at liberty to say oh, where okay. it is <laughs> <laughs> but it, it it's I will tell you that it actually was a bank vault there was like a bank that was going out of business and Kincaid bought it and like installed it basically as part of his studio and that that was where he was keeping all of those works wow so so this vault here, you and the family actually went through practically a lot of the artwork. I, I don't want to say all because I, I feel like that's probably forever. <laughs> yeah, it's so many. Like when they told me that there were like over 6,000 pieces in there. And I have to tell you, it is tiny. It's really small. Mm -hmm. um, um, and it is just crammed full. Um I will. Well, so basically, like after he died, the family, um, they had to inventory his work, you know, after he died. And that was how they started going through it. And that was when the daughters really discovered all of these surprising kind of dark works. Um, I did not, fortunately, have to go through all of them. It was like a sort of a selection, you know, of stuff that I was able to look at and kind of choose, like, what 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 are we going to um show in the film and then again and also what are we going to show to the critics like there's that scene at the end um which we can talk about um but basically it was i did not have to go through the thousands of works <laughs> which is good i did see i saw a lot of them but you know nowhere near that amount so miranda how did you choose which artwork to display into your film yeah i think um so I was always looking for artworks that could illustrate either, you know, if it were, if we're talking about something factual, you know, like he was painting, you know, he, he wanted to be, become the painter of light. So I was picking works that where you could see the light effects in different ways, right? That's a very, you know, sort of standard thing to do. But then in terms of the other stuff, I was really looking at the work as a way to, um, kind of complement or illustrate what we're learning about his psyche because that's what I think the vault is the vault is basically Thomas Kincaid's psyche it's his inner life it's all the, the stuff that he wanted to be able to express and like basically by creating this persona of the painter of light could not express so um it was really um you know a matter of taking the works that I had and looking to see like what is really gonna support what I'm talking about at this moment so 
Um, and, and also, you know, what do I think is interesting? Like what is ar artistically interesting and showing like just the incredible range that he had, like he really did. Um, so, you know, there's that one, there's this one um, moment where the daughters are in the vault and they pull out this kind of like, it's like purple and it has these gold um, paint, uh, brush strokes on it. Yeah. Um, and that's like, a, it's like a contemporary art piece, you know? And it's like, you would never think Thomas Kincaid did this. Um, That's but, true. That's true. I, I was, I, I mean, you practically answer what, what is the most surprising thing about Thomas Kincaid? And that's, that is the most surprising thing. Um, Can I add something to that? Which yeah, is that like, another thing that I found really surprising about him was how incredibly well-educated he was about art. Like, I think that there was this, he had this, he was like a performance artist. You know, that's what a lot of people say in the movie, but it is true. Like he's, he's like, I'm going to go out and be the painter of light today, you know? And part of that um, act um, was that he was this kind of folksy guy. And um, one thing that's not in the film, um, but you can maybe hear it a little bit in the footage is like, he would sometimes put on the axe, like the local accent, like he would put on an accent sometimes, like just creep into an accent when he was talking to different audiences um, because he was so, you know, because he was a, being a performance artist. Um, but he, um, I think that folksy kind of persona, like you would not have thought that he was as deeply steeped in um just art history and like a knowledge of art as he really was wow that is that is truly fascinating um just like your documentary but uh one last thing Miranda before I let you go is as audiences have a chance to watch your documentary here at South by Southwest and hopefully more in the future what is the one most important take that you hope they walk away with after watching your film Yes, when people watch Art for Everybody, I really want them to come away with a kind of a renewed understanding of how important it is to engage with people who are maybe different from us with nuance and compassion. I think that, you know, as I've said before, in our very polarized society, I think that, you know, both our political discourse and our social media landscape and who knows what other things are con sort of conspiring to help us dehumanize each other. And I think it's really important to remember that we need to rehumanize each other. And that's the only way that we can really kind of operate as a society. Well said. Well, Miranda, thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation about art for everybody. And uh, you, have, you have fun at South by Southwest. It's I will. Thank you so much, Gig. Great talking to you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.